Hi, I'm Joe Kleeman. I also go by Citizen X. Um, I run a online cyberpunk chat that's 24-7 um, for Interlock Unlimited off of Data Fortress 2020. In league with uh, that website. Uh, but I'm also a veteran of horror gaming and I've run various tabletop and online RPGs for I think uh, about 16 years now, something like that. It's been a while. So I've been contacted to kind of give you some advice as far as a storytelling point of view or as a game master what are some of the best things you can do to make a fully immersive horror game uh, if you're running at tabletop one of the things I've always seen recommended for game masters is you know to have the right kind of lighting kind of dim but where you can still see the character sheets and the die rolls things like that background music helps um, I know when I used to run Call of Cthulhu games I would get the soundtrack from the original Quake video games and play that in the background. Um, it was all done by Nine Inch Nails but it's all very instrumental very creepy shit. Um, definitely keeps the players on their toes. So the part of the part of it's just the physical environment itself can help lend toward a horror game. In a brightly lit room you know, even if you describe a nasty monster, not everybody really cares. You know, it's not going to be as immersive for them. It'll be more of a humorous thing. And if you really want to run a proper horror game, you want to disturb your players just a little bit. There just needs to be that one moment throughout the session that's going to make it all worthwhile. Where someone jumps, <laughs> you know, <laughs> out of their chair for no reason other than you're describing something to them that's happening to their character. Um... When you're running a game, you want to use the lens of the character's perception to really drive home the horror of the game. Like, Call of Cthulhu is a good uh, classic horror game. You know, there's offshoots of it like Delta Green that are more modern day. But one thing I always like to do in Cthulhu is not so much let the players know what their like sanity number is at or anything like that. I they don't really need to know the mechanics behind it. Just that their player, the character, has picked up an old book and read through it, and now every time that they look at themselves in the mirror, they see tattooed the text out of the book across their arms or on other people's faces, or then other people that they run into in the game start to be speak lines out of the Necronomicon or whatever occult tome they've read recently. So the player is the only, or the character is the only one hearing this, but the player has to react to the fact that they're getting all this strange, you know, different audio and visual stimuli through their character. So they're they role play them differently. So without needing to reduce some number arbitrarily, the player is automatically role playing, dealing with insanity. So the character's actions become more and more irrational due to the fact that they're not seeing or hearing what other people are seeing and hearing and seeing throughout the game. So that's one that I always definitely stick to is control the character's perception. The, what the character sees may not always be accurate. They don't just, you know, they don't just see a green scaly monster, they see a figure in the fog. You know, they don't know what it is till they get close enough. Um, just because they see a man in a black suit following him doesn't mean that he's actually there. Maybe they're just paranoid. Maybe they believe they're being surveilled all the time by the CIA. And they find bugs in every little electronic device they look in. Now, they're the only ones that see these bugs, perhaps. Or if you want to get really nefarious, the bugs actually do exist and they are being surveilled. But either way, those kind of things are what you want to play with in order to create like a tense horror environment for the character and the player will respond equally well to that. Uh, another thing is in horror games violence should be not over the top but really gritty and have consequences. You know it's good to have realistic medically accurate 
type of violence sometimes in a horror game. So you don't just shoot a security guard, you shoot him in the, you blow his guts out, and he's sitting there crying as he's slowly bleeding to death, begging the player characters to call the ambulance for him. You know, it should really weigh on the character's consciousness when they do an uh, immoral act or just commit an act of violence in the game. It should have long-lasting consequences. I've, I've run a game where it was just the players murdered one NPC at one point, and that, that character was just haunted by that NPC's ghost the entire rest of a whole campaign arc. It influenced everything from that point on for that character. Because they would always see that one, one uh, agent that they had killed, <laughs> executed execution style. Just that one guy had come to haunt them, and you know, the ha the ghost would always be shit talking the <laughs> the character, telling him, you know, well, you know, you are just like me. You know, we're the same, but yet the only difference is is you killed me instead of vice versa. You know, you could easily be in the position that I'm in you know, haunting me. <laughs> so, and then the ghost would still antagonize him in some ways because he could manifest and only the character would see him. But sometimes he would manifest in order to hide other details from that character. Or he would manifest inconveniently. So he would appear as this creeping shadow when he's in the middle of trying to find another real antagonist to kill him. And he, so he shoots at the ghost instead of at you know, the other guy that's hiding in the shadows that's real. Things like that. So, you know, there should always be consequences to your actions. And last but not least, just to get into the type of players that you want in a horror role-playing game have to be mature enough to handle the subject matter. You can't just... If you're really offended by things easily, horror gaming's probably not the way to go for you. I mean... If you want truly immersive horror gaming, you're going to cross a few lines, moral boundaries, you know. You've got to have a certain amount of creative control to it. And if players can't handle that in a mature aspect, you know, it can damage relationships and friendships and things like that. So you just need to be upfront with your players before you run a game. Let them know it's going to be sensitive material that will be handled throughout the gaming. Um... So that just sums up a little bit of brief advice as far as horror gaming goes. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.